The great thing about summer is finding time to relax at the beach. Dad, can we go get some ice cream? Oh, oh ice I... cream. <laughs> Come on then. Ah oh, well, maybe I can get back to the sunbathing later. We're visiting the Comox Valley on Vancouver Island's east coast. This area has a bit of everything, coast, mountains, and rich farming country. There are three main communities, the city of Courtney, the town of Comox, and the village of Cumberland, each with its own distinctive character. And within easy reach is the mountain resort at Mount Washington. The area is also great for local food with over 400 farmers and producers, including Anne Milligan, who has started growing something very unusual at a secret location nearby, hemp. Six or seven years ago when I moved to the valley and, and got involved with the farming uh, community here, I, I sort of fell in love with this plant and the more I researched, the more I was gobsmacked with yeah. how many ways it has been used historically and yeah. how many ways it is found its way into our culture in every corner of the world. Right. Hemp has been grown around the world for thousands of years. So why is it so unusual for Anne to be growing it? Here we've suffered, unfortunately, um, an understanding of this plant differently. So there was a 60 year ban on having anything right. to do with hemp in our country, which is too bad because yeah. uh, it uh, was a huge industry in Canada. The scientific name for these plants is cannabis sativa. They are cannabis plants, but this isn't an illegal grow up producing mind altering drugs. These hemp plants have been bred over many years to have no psychoactive effects, but they do have many uses. Their fibers can be used for textiles and rope making. Their oil has an excellent omega-3 to omega-6 balance. And hemp is also a valuable food plant. Hemp is one of the few, if not the only, um, plant-based protein that is complete. Right, okay. And so that, yeah. that puts it in a category kind of on its own. Right up there with quinoa, isn't it? It's, kind yeah. of, yeah. yes. And um, the part that I find so fascinating with it is that we have loads of seeds and nuts that are in our current diets, mm -hmm. but none that I have personally tested and tried out um, that give you the type of fat that your body can understand and deal right. with that uh, complements your digestion mm -hmm. and gives you that satisfied feeling right. so you don't feel an hour after eating that you need to go nibble on something because oh, stuff okay. is missing. Anne has developed a number of hemp food products, including Hemp Scream, an ice cream made from hemp milk, which she sells at local farmer's markets. So now we get to taste the You'd final like result. Would like to try some? I would, would love to try okay. some. Okay, well this is, um, the little unit that I take to the local farmer's market and we have uh, a few different varieties. So this is the um, hemp milk with the coconut milk and the maple flavor. Yeah, so it has maple, in this case it has a maple syrup and it has uh, dried figs. Oh, so I have a maple lovely. fig combination. Maple fig, okay. Yeah. Lovely. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's spectacular. That really is spectacular. I mean, I like figs as well, and that maple and fig. I do have somebody who I promised an ice cream to. Zane? <laughs> what do you think? Pretty good, eh? Many visitors to the Comox Valley head straight to Comox and Courtney, but the historic village of Cumberland is also well worth a visit. Built in 1888 by Robert Dunsmuir to service his coal mines, many of the old buildings are still intact, giving the village a real period charm. Today the mines have all closed, but the town has found a new life as a centre for outdoor recreation and has a thriving cafe culture. I'm visiting the Wandering Moose Cafe with someone who knows the local food scene very well, Leslie Staff, president of the North Vancouver Island Chefs Association. The most important thing to us is, is working in, within the community mm -hmm. um, because that's what's really special about the Comox Valley. Right. It has a really strong community. Yeah. We have a huge number of farmers, fishermen, producers. They're doing so many cool, neat, neat things. Yeah. A lot of them are actually associate members of our branch, yeah. which is, makes us a little different. We're very grassroots. 
Yesterday we did the food fest at the farmer's market. We do it several times a year, uh, about eight. Yeah. And uh, we collect from vendors and then we give away, we cook the food and, and give it away. It's a wonderful opportunity for them because uh, they get to see on the fly what you can do with different things. And it's Absolutely. It's so fun to have um, a dialogue yeah. with your customer. A lot of times we're stuck behind the stove, behind the wall, behind and it forces us to get out and actually work with the customer, right. which is always awesome. Leslie mentioned the local farmer's market, and it's a great place to find out what's currently in season and available, as well as meeting with local farmers, producers, friends, and chefs like Aaron Rail, who is here to buy fresh supplies for his restaurant, The White Whale. Daikon, yeah. strawberries, raspberries, plums. You know, when you go to the grocery store, you don't get to meet the people that grow your food. Yeah. <laughs> I caught up with him there later. Well, Aaron, thank you very much for inviting us to this beautiful patio. This is just a spectacular location. Fantastic. The whole reason I bought the restaurant right here. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. It's beautiful. So fresh from the market. I hear you're a bit of a regular down there. Yeah, I make it there every Saturday for the last eight years since I moved to the Valley. Okay. And uh, sometimes the Wednesday markets as well, which are downtown. Right. It's part of our mission statement to be as local as possible. And it's one of the reasons I moved to the Valley is because of the great proliferation of farms in the Valley. And as a chef, to be so close to the product that you work with and to be able to forge relationships with people and build on them is everything from cheesemakers, farmers, fishermen, shellfish farmers, winemakers, breweries now. Right. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty dreamy for a chef. <laughs> As Chef Aaron says, this area has so much great food to offer, but my next stop is one of my personal favorites. One of the most recent success stories here in the Comox Valley is Tree Island Yogurt. And today we've been invited by Marissa Miles, founder and owner of Tree Island Yogurt, to tell us a little bit more about their story. Marissa, hi, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you, Steve. Thank you very much for inviting us in. This is just spectacular. It's like a big science experiment, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I like to call this uh, our raw milk room the life-size lab. So I always think of my husband, who's a microbiologist, and I imagine him in the lab, and I imagine how he's taken his bench experience to the dairy. Isn't that fantastic? And it is, it is. It's like a gigantic chemistry setting. <laughs> it is, yeah. So what do you do here? I mean, we know you make yogurt, but how does that process happen? Yeah, we actually, we're artisan yogurt makers. So the way we make yogurt is a lot different than you would find if you were an industrial uh, dairy plant. Right. So we do it the old fashioned way. Okay. We actually source our milk from a local dairy farm called right. Birkdale, okay. um, which uh, raises its cows using a grass fed diet. Um, we receive raw milk early in the morning, okay. uh, which is pumped into this big tank right here. This yeah. is our bulk storage tank. It's okay. refrigerated. It keeps the milk cold right. uh, below four degrees and it holds 3,000 liters. I guess in the grand scheme of things in large scale yogurt production is probably pretty small. It is. It actually is really small. Right. And so um, it does allow, allow us to get fresh milk every day right. to work in small batches. Okay. And so we take from the 3,000 liters, we actually even break it down uh, farther into 500 liter uh, vat pasteurizer. Right. Okay. So we, we uh, do a long, slow cooking in the pasteurizer where we use um, the fresh whole milk. Right. We add uh, BC honey for sweetening. Oh, okay. Yep. And we also you add the live culture. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you say live culture, you're basically growing bacteria, aren't you, when you make yogurt? We are, exactly. Yeah. So the milk is a very lively food source for the bacteria. Yeah. The bacteria are lactic acid bacteria yep. that go into the milk and they eat the lactose. What actually got us into yogurt making was that whole concept of the human microbiome, um, of feeding your body the good bacteria. Right and also to be um, using really high quality milk. So mm -hmm. by using grass-fed milk, we are using milk that has more omega-3s, right. more CLAs, which are good for your heart. Yep. You'll notice the creamy color of our yogurt. Yep. Um, it has a little golden tinge. Yep. That's the beta carotene. Oh, okay. um, Again, from the grass-fed milk. Which you get it from the, when cows are eating grass. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. One of the questions I get asked a lot by people is what's the difference between the cream top and the Greek yogurts? 
Cream on top yogurt is a recipe where we use just fresh whole milk in live culture, right. and it's not um, homogenized, so we don't break down the fat. Oh, okay. So we call it cream on top because the cream rises to because the top. Because of course the fat is lighter than the, yes. the milk product. Yeah, you'll find that that yogurt, it's 3.5% milk fat. Okay. It's really nice and light and fresh. Really yeah. great if you want to eat it with granola, mm -hmm. um, or mix in some chia seeds because there's more moisture in it. Right. Okay. The Greek yogurt, uh, which is different, um, is made using a different process. So oh, okay. we actually filter the yogurt um, to take the whey out of. So that's removing some of the extra water yeah. and lactose that was still left in the milk. Right. Um, and then so you're getting more concentrated fat and protein. So in our Greek yogurt, there's nine grams of protein per serving, right. which people are really excited about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the also thing people notice about our yogurt is that it's a 6.5% Greek yogurt. Right. So lots of people say, hey, isn't Greek yogurt 2%? Um, in North America, where they, they add powders and fillers, mm -hmm. they, there's recipes that are higher protein, they add milk powders, right. but our yogurt, we keep the cream in it. Right. So you get this really soft mouthfeel. Yeah. It's thicker and creamier and richer. It's not 10%, it's just 6.5, but it hits yeah. all the spots. Yeah. The yogurt's been around for thousands and thousands of years, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And the exciting thing, I, whenever I think of yogurt, is I think, hey, you know, this was invented before there was refrigeration. Yeah. So this is a very old food that people have been eating for a long time. So I always think of the old guy on his horseback carrying around the milk in his, yeah. <laughs> the goat's stomach that turned into yogurt. And yeah. that, that's how it all happened. It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? We've come so far from, as I said, a fellow on the horse <laughs> with the goat skin to all of this. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. awesome, Marissa. Okay. Thank you so much. For our visit to the Comox Valley, we're lucky to be staying at the gorgeous Kingfisher Resort, right on the ocean. This resort has everything you might need including an excellent restaurant. Today we're very fortunate to be in the kitchens of the Kingfisher Resort and Spa with Executive Chef Niall Petherbridge. Niall, thank you very much for welcoming us into your kitchen and you're going to do some uh, lovely salmon by the looks of it. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to do uh, a beautiful fresh spring salmon today. From nice. Local salmon, uh, Bain Sound, which is not right. too far from here. Yep. Coming from the Lower Mainland recently. Yeah. There's a plethora of fabulous vendors and producers here in the uh, Comox Valley. Awesome. We have direct access to those vendors. They'll grow what we want, yep. when we want it. Yeah. Oh, a little hot on that one. Sorry, Steve. -o. That's all right. A little we'll bit of flame. That. That's always good. It's we'll good for the that. cameras. It gives us a little bit of drama, a little bit of there excitement. We can uh, edit that out. That's good. <laughs> just put that in the oven. <laughs> So you're reducing your wine down a little bit there, burning off the alcohol? Yep. In with our risotto. Uh, we're doing a vegetable-based stock. Okay. So in the restaurant, we're able to use that for vegetarian, vegan, right. all sorts of different dishes. Yep. If it was specific only to this dish, then we would use a fish stock, but. All right, so our risotto's almost done. We're okay. just putting in the crab to warm it up. Right, so last minute for the crab. This has already been cooked before it's been yep. shelled. Peas are now in season, like yep. your uh, English peas, so those are available right now. Yep. We're going to saute a little, little asparagus, which is a vegetable component of the dish. Okay. Finish with a little Parmesan cheese. Risotto for me is all about the creaminess. It all comes from stirring the starch development in the cheese. Yep. So we did our pickled sea beans, yep. pickled fennel, yep. and then this is preserved lemon, which we're doing in-house. Okay. I'm going to throw some pea tips in there. Those are from Patterson Farms. Nice. This is a little uh, basil oil that we're making in-house. Okay. That really is a very, very sexy looking dish. And this is on the menu. This is exactly the way we're doing it out in the restaurant. Excellent. Every night. There you go, there's our dish. Beautiful, look at that. Well, chef, as they say, the, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> the time has come. This really does look spectacular. I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's a, it's a beautiful looking dish. So should we dive in? We should. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, that salmon is just spectacularly cooked. That'll do, Steve, huh? That, that really works. That really works. And with an office like this, what more could you ask for? <laughs> Thank you.
Comox Valley is always a great place to visit. There's so many things to see and do up there. And I, again, I'm just always blown away by the, the stuff that people are doing in that region. So today, what I thought I'd do is we're going to make some power muffins. So these muffins are going to contain a little bit of everything. We've got the tree island yogurt, we've got some hemp hearts, we're going to have some whole dried cranberries in there, and of course bananas. Now bananas, Comox Valley is not known for its bananas, but of course bananas are very high in potassium, so for a power muffin we need to put some bananas in. So let's start with those. So we're going to get a couple of really nice ripe bananas. We'll lose the little white stringy bits there. And then just using my whip, I'm just going to break them down. They're nicely ripened so that they will quite easily mash in the bowl. And if they're not completely smooth, that's fine too because a little bit of texture in there is not a bad thing. 250 mils of brown sugar. The brown sugar will actually act as a little bit of an abrasive and help to break up those bananas so we can just whip all those together. Make sure there's no lumps of sugar kicking around. Okay. And our vegetable oil. I've actually reduced the vegetable oil in this recipe quite a bit because of the bananas. The bananas can take place of some of that oil. So we've reduced our fat a little bit. We're going with our hemp hearts. Two eggs. One egg or two eggs. There we go. So when you're making muffins, you want to make sure all your wet ingredients go into one bowl and all your dry ingredients go into another bowl. And this is the tr Tree Island Farms cream top yogurt. And if you can see right in there, you can actually see that cream that's settled on the top of the yogurt. Just beautiful. Now, 250 mils, so this is 500, so about half of the, the container there. So there's all our wet ingredients. The one thing I'm going to add to that is my whole cranberries. And these are dried cranberries, but they're whole cranberries. So we're going to get a real nice burst in each mouthful from our cranberries there. So there's all of our wet ingredients. Okay, cranberries will start to rehydrate as they sit there. Now we're doing the dry. So three cups of all-purpose flour, 15 mils or one tablespoon of baking powder and a pinch of salt okay. and we're just going to blend all the dry ingredients together. So here's the thing with muffins, you do not want to overmix them, really important. That's why we're mixing all the dry ingredients together so that the baking powder, the salt and the flour are well blended because if I put them all into there separately, by the time I've blended them properly together, then I've overmixed the batter. When you add liquid to flour and start to stir it and manipulate it, gluten strands start to develop. And little science lesson for you. The proteins in the flour start off like a little ball of wool. And as you rehydrate them, they start to open up. And as you start to mix them and manipulate them, they start to bind together and twist into long strands. And that's your gluten. Now, of course, you need gluten for it to form the structure in the body. But what you don't want to do is have those twisted strands of gluten too tight because then you get tough, chewy muffins. So the idea here is that we're going to mix it very, very gently. Meanwhile, I've got my baking cups all ready to go. Make a well in the center of the dry ingredients and all of the wet goes in there. And I'm using a rubber spatula here because then I get the most amount of action each time I run the spatula through. So it's almost a folding action. Run the spatula around the bowl and just turn it over onto itself so that the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients come together and it should look almost a little unmixed. You might see a few little flakes or specks of dry flour. That's okay. So as I say, just a nice gentle folding action. Do not beat it. Do not whip it. Do not stir it vigorously. You see how I'm and that is my muffin batter done. So I've got my muffin tins lined with parchment paper muffin cups here. And then we're going to just fill these up one at a time. There we go. And of course, just for fun, I'm using square muffin tins because why not? So we've got the cranberry, we've got the banana, we've got the hemp hearts. And of course, as we learned from Anne, those hemp hearts are so full of lots of good nutrients. They're going to make these muffins just spectacular. So here we go. I'll just 
Do a little top up on some of these here. So in this bowl, I've got simply a little bit of brown sugar. There's about 170 mils there, about three quarters of a cup. Okay, and about a tablespoon or 15 mils of cinnamon. Just blend the cinnamon and the sugar together so that it's evenly mixed. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of melted butter to that, which will kind of just bind it all. And that's gonna give us that nice crunchy, cinnamony, sugary topping. There we go. And we'll just scatter that over each one. These smell delicious before they've even gone in the oven. You can smell the cinnamon and the cranberries and the bananas. And Perfect, there we go. Uh, just wipe the edge of your pan. It's just one less thing that you have to scrub off afterwards. If you've got batter on the sides and it bakes on, it makes a bit of a mess, so. There we go. And then we're just gonna put this into a 400 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Well, I can think of no better a pairing with hemp seed power muffins, i.e. breakfast, than with coffee. But this is not just your regular coffee, this is cold brew coffee. If you've gone into any coffee shop recently, I'm sure you've seen mention of cold brew coffee. The coffee is infused in cold water from anywhere to 12 to 20 hours. In doing so, you just negate all that bitterness and the acidity, and what you get are the wonderful roasted notes that the coffee bean has uh, and we so rarely get. And I think it's those, the roasty notes, which will really go well with the hemp, that, you know, the nice nuttiness uh, and the creaminess of the yogurt. Coffee is good for the morning, but if you're enjoying Steve's Power Muffins in the afternoon, I'd like to suggest trying Sea Ciders Ruby Rosé. It is a delicious rhubarb infused cider and I think it will really pair well because the, the rhubarb aspect of it and the sweet apple and honey aspect will play off the yogurt and the, the rich hemp seeds. <laughs>